we've just arrived at a uh, lake with no name here. We're close to the border of Algonquin Park in uh, the northern Ontario area. And uh, we just wanted to give you guys a quick lowdown of what, what's our purpose here doing bushcraft. Um, for Nick and I, this time of year, um, it, we're, we're putting our skills to the test. It's a very difficult time of year to be uh, practicing bushcraft skills. It's uh, end of the winter, pre-spring. We just had a downpour this morning, approximately 15 millimeters of rain. We still have a lot of snow up here and it's compacted down. Everything is wet, everything is damp. So you have those plus temperatures during the day and the minus temperatures at night. A huge concern for anybody out here at this time of year, if you do end up in a situation where you have to stay overnight, is hypothermia. Even if you're out here for the day, hypothermia is a huge concern. Being able to practice bushcraft and uh, practice those skill sets in this type of environment it, it, it can be difficult because you're trying to uh, compensate. Being out here, uh, for us, we look at it as a cleanse. We're gonna be living solely off uh, wild food, uh, harvesting what little wild edibles are available to us around this time, as well as uh, Jason has uh, harvested, butchered, and prepared some wild game meat for us. I believe moose and venison. This is gonna be a really cool trip. Of course, like Jason said, hypothermia is huge right now. It's been raining the last few days and we're scheduled for rain pretty much the whole time we're out here. Uh, as much fun as we're having, there is danger to this that uh, hypothermia can set in through the night. We just have to be extra careful. As you can see, I'm wearing full rain gear right now. It's been raining all morning, so uh, that's always going to be our main priority of this trip is not freezing to death. So just as our ancestors would have done, they would have approached a lake similar to this here and they would have arrived at their hardware store, they would have arrived at their grocery store, they would have arrived at their pharmacy. And what they would be doing is they'd be looking at a canopy over here and they would know what every tree is, they'd be in touch with that land. So what I'm seeing here right now, we have our spruce, we have some white pine, we have some red pines up over here. You can see some birch which is going to be essential for us to get some fresh uh, birch sap and some sugars into our system at this time of year. It doesn't require boiling at all. And as we look up over here, we do know that there's a narrow spot. We're also looking for a good place to build a, a shelter where we're going to get southern exposure from the sun and stay warm. And as you can see where the rocks start warming up, that's where the, the snow is going to first start receding from the land. So that may be a potential good spot for us. And all why is all this important? Because they wouldn't have come in on a snow machine seven kilometers they might have been walking and the amount of energy that you're going to expend is very important that you want to conserve your energy to find that location so they'd be very in touch with the land and see where they want to go so that they can go directly there far and it's a beautiful sight. The, there's the only downside there's not a lot of spruce boughs but uh, being on a frozen lake we could just go anywhere really and uh, get them. Whoa. We're post holing right now we should have just used our snowshoes but we're just scouting different sites. This one is good. Just to give you an idea, like I'm well up over my knee now. So central snow trench site here. Yeah, snow trench. If we wanted to build a snow trench, this would be the site. Especially right in here, because you can see it. Birch trees, fresh water, don't have to boil. Yeah. A little bit of sugar. We got There's a, a couple back here. Maple tree right in front of us. Nice. Fresh maple sap and syrup. Yeah. We have uh, potential cambium site, white pine. Yeah. Red pine, higher ground we have a fuel source with the dead birch. Yeah. Uh, and some uh, dead maple right there we can use for hardwood coals. As well, there is a lot more boughs on this side. Yeah. And this is, is the negative to this side. Uh, we were post holing big time. Mmm, decisions. Yeah. Decisions, decisions. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. What it basically boils down to, we'll check out another site, yeah. but it kind of boils down to what you want your issue to be. Always have your snowshoes on, post-holing, or uh, 
and lots of boughs or not as not enough snow to do a snow trench and lots of boughs and not post holing and there was a lot more opportunity to grab uh, the pine cambium over yeah. there yeah but i'm noticing as this hill goes up, there is a lot of hardwood trees back up in there. I see a lot of maple up in there. Yeah. Good fuel Ooh. source. Yeah, this is, uh, honestly, this is a hard decision. Yeah. I think maybe let's check out another site and One then spot, yeah. we'll go from there. So change of plans. We've actually decided that this spot is ideal. Uh, we uh, have a shovel, so we're gonna dig out our snow trenches back here. We'll have a fire pit lounging area over here. Uh, walking across the lake, we're in the very, I don't know if you can see it on camera. I'll try and get over here. We're in the narrows, so we could easily skirt across this lake uh, in the narrows to you know, get supplies or things that we found great about that side, or that site. Uh, we could easily just cut across and bring it over here. It's a little extra work, but I think it'll be worth it because this site is looking pretty good to me right now. Looks like probably nothing on camera, but trenches here, lounging here, fire here, uh, fresh water source right here, even with the maple. And then we have access to lots of hardwood trees in the distance, whereas on that side, of the lake there was nothing well there was a couple dead standing hardwood trees but not a lot the sun is shining look at this this is our omen that, this is the omen that we got this this is the perfect spot i love it oh that sun beautiful. feels so good absolutely beautiful. oh yeah get her india <laughs> yeah i like <laughs> well fuck so when you find your tree, you're going to want to make sure, this is a little bit small, but it's the only one that we have here. You're going to want to make sure for a tree this size, you're only putting one tap into it. So what you're going to do, you don't want to go too far up off the ground. So you're going to find your place. You're going to push your knife in, make sure that the blade is away from you. And then what I like to do is I like to just dig in a little bit there. So we're making a few taps here. What I've done is taken out the pith and uh, sharpened the ends a bit so they can stick into the tree better. I'm just gonna put these in my mouth. And just start it away. Um, now what we're gonna do is if you put this here upside down inside, what's gonna happen on a downward angle is the fluid's eventually going to build up, fill up that channel, and it should drip off the end here. So now that we got these here set up, they're dripping real good. We're just gonna put a little cover on top. That's gonna make sure that not so much debris gets inside. We'll make sure our drip's getting in there. And we'll set it and forget it. And uh, we're gonna get working on our shelter for the next couple days. And now that we got that that maple tapped, we'll start shoveling out our uh, our homes. Okay, so Nick and I have created this tradition. Whenever we go out in Mother Nature and we're practicing our bushcraft skills, we're going to be taking um, you know our, our food and our energy from the land. So uh, we we have this, um, I guess. What would you call it? A ceremonial tradition. Yeah. Um, that we're going to bless our, our land and give thanks to Mother Nature for what we're about to receive. Um, so I made this uh, moose hide bag a couple weeks ago. I hand sewed it together. And uh, it's based on the Sami indigenous style, but uh, it, there's some coffee in here, and I did bring out some tobacco. There's some for you. Thank you, sir. This is also a First Nations ceremonial tradition. Uh, it's used to 
back always used to give respect to the land and for me, uh, my ancestors, and it's just respect for what we're doing. We're taking trees and uh, using the land to live. For the animals that'll be sustaining us. And this is how we give thanks back. So thank you, Mother Nature, for all you give us and all you do for us. Uh, I wouldn't know what I'd be doing with my life if I wasn't obsessed with nature. So, <laughs> amen. Amen. All right, so uh, while Jason's digging the snow trenches, I'm going to head out along the lake and collect some spruce boughs for our beds. That way we're both working at the same time and getting more done. And uh, we only have one shovel, so I'm not just gonna stand around and watch them work. Uh, so come along and we'll get some boughs. Essentially, we're just giving uh, these, these trees a haircut. Uh, a lot of people criticize using spruce boughs because they say it's harmful to the trees and uh, leave no trace, but what we're actually doing is creating an open area for sunlight to come in and create new growth, as well as giving the trees a haircut aren't gonna kill it. If anything, it's gonna make it grow stronger, uh, not having to feed as many branches. And it's just a traditional way of life. That's the bottom line. So I'm going to find a comfortable spot where I'm not sinking into the snow and start trimming. A lot of times you can just use your hands. Another helpful trick is always keep your spruce boughs in one direction. Helps a lot in travel as well as when you're setting up. a lot by grabbing big thick branches because they can get pretty uncomfortable and I just don't need them. Take, just take what you need. So the reason why I like to use spruce boughs is that the needles go all the way around the branch and makes them a lot loftier when you're laying on them. They don't compress as easy and when you get off of it they kind of no pun intended spruce right back up again whereas if you look over here i believe this is a balsam fir they are usable but the needles on them are flat uh, meaning they only go out side to side rather than all the way around uh, which means you're going to need to collect probably three times the amount that if unless you were using spruce one thing I also wanted to mention is just that, you know, I'm not completely stripping these trees. I'm just walking from tree to tree, taking, you know, two handfuls from each and it's literally no impact on the trees. Okay, so I just fell in this hole. I'm walking along, we're like, ah, oh, we won't fall in. We're right on top of snow. I went in deep. So when you do that, you want to put fresh snow, if you can find it, on your pants. Sure. And then I step into this thing so that way I'm sinking deeper. I'll hand you my camera. I'm gonna stand on this. Here. Just work my way across. Yeah, that went into a boat here. Uh, my boot is not wet, thank God. That was sketchy. See, it's not even. Whew. That was a rush. No, I'm fine. I'm perfectly fine. But wow, that was scary. Yep. Good to know. There's a crack that runs up and through here. You know, that's karma. Because we stood 
It's karma because we stood right in that spot there and we we're worried about walking across here. And you can see my tracks right below you, Jason. I'm laughing. I go, oh, that can't be easier. Then boom, right in. We're good. Yeah. Getting cocky. Oh, and now that we've uh, harvested it, we skirted the lake and harvested all our boughs. One way you want to lay down your boughs in your bed, uh, these thicker branches could get pretty uncomfortable throughout the night. So how you kind of do it, they call it a fish bone style, is where you place the softest parts in the middle, leaving these branches on the outside of your shelter. And then you lay them down this way. That way the hard edges are more against the wall, not in the zone you'll be sleeping in. You'll find too, if you do it properly, it'll feel like it's cradling you in the center of it. And uh, so that's what I'm gonna do with this huge mound of boughs and we'll go from there. Super bug. almost 7 o'clock p.m. sun's going down we've kind of just been putting our nose to the ground and uh, getting as much done as we can here we have our aqua quest waterproof um, tarp and uh, the safari yeah and uh, this is gonna be our living room here about two feet out from our living room we're gonna have our fire pit which I'm digging down right now we've gathered some uh, hardwood for tonight for our moose burgers and uh, we'll just bring you on over here to the grand suite. Oh, For the low sweet. cost of uh, free, um, you can glamp in this wonderful shelter that we've built here. Um, again, it's an AquaQuest waterproof um, tarp on top as well. And uh, we are expecting some rain. We put a punky log up in the middle just to give it a bit of a pitch. And um, yeah, we've used some spruce boughs underneath and we're all ready to be nice tucked into bed, but we need to have a full belly first. So uh, that's, that's our next step. Fire pit, bench, fire pit, bench, a little more firewood and moose burgers. Life is good. Oh yeah, buddy. Also, I just wanted to mention about these tarps. They're great uh, in between. I have the defender tarp and it's honestly just so heavy if you're doing any trips like this it's just gonna bog you down and the lightweight uh just it's a little bit sensitive it could rip easy or uh just not as good around the fire so this is the in between it's a little bit heavier duty but it's still relatively pretty lightweight you don't really notice it when you pack it so we got two of the same tarps here one here and this guy here and then we got a nice room with a view. Oh, that does feel good to sit yeah. down. So this is the first time we've sat down all day. It's 20 to eight. We're quite hungry, um, but we just wanted to show you the setup here before we got our fire going. Um, Nick's dug out this pit here and straight over here is a little ditch because um, there's a slight angle on the way down so that any uh, water runoff is going to run down and not pool in the middle of our uh, fire pit here. So um, Yeah, it was, it was pretty much solid ice from all the freezing rain, so it was, uh, it's a small hole, but it took a lot of work. As well, uh, sorry to cut you off, Jay. Uh, we're, we rolled over this oh, right. big pumpy log. Pumpy. <laughs> so hungry. We rolled over this big <laughs> punky log. And uh, I'll just get out of the way. You can see we have our uh, Frost River uh, lid of our bag. And we just drape it over just to keep the moisture off of us uh, for the night. As well as uh, laid down a green log this way and uh, put some boughs under our feet just to keep our feet directly off the snow. And uh, just notice Jason's incredible mound of birch bark <laughs> go big or go home <laughs> yeah so uh we got uh all our dead standing wood here uh lots of uh, maple i believe yep 
And then uh, Jason Goddard, uh, Morris Kohansky style uh, twig bundle. So I think now we should just let the fire burn down. Start the fire, let it burn down. Uh, we wanted to go grab those winter green. Yeah. And uh, maybe a little more firewood while we're out, out there. And come back here and what's on the menu tonight? We have moose burgers with wintergreen berries and uh, a side of deer rib cage. Oh, yes. That's going to be good. So I'm going to auger hole and get some fresh uh, lake water and yeah. uh, maybe some maple sap while we're at it. So. Yeah, that would be nice. Yeah, I'm getting low. I'm a quarter canteen now. So we'll see you when she dies down. the few uh, winter wild edibles that you're gonna find out here at this time of year is these wonderful red winter green berries they pack a nice punch to them we're gonna collect about a handful of these stuff them in with our moose burgers and have a nice uh, wild wild flavorful meal right on so we're just grabbing them along here so I know it's getting dark but I don't know. Let me see if I can bring this up. I got my head in the too. Right here. Winterberry. I'll take you with me. Okay, so for the uh, appetizer here, we have some uh, rack of venison ribs. And we're just gonna take them on this little maple shoot. And Stick one end in there. Stick one end in the other. And we're gonna thread it through our rack of ribs. That's gonna be tasty. We've got our maple sap here. And uh, what we're going to do is we're actually going to take some of this Boost Burger and I'm just going to break up pieces of it. And we're going to stick this all inside of the uh, maple sap. It's going to go on the fire and we're just going to get the nice sweet undertones of the maple as it smokes on the maple coals with this wonderful wild harvested uh, Boost Burger. And all those flavors are just going to sit and bubble together with a couple of uh, winter green berries. And we're just going to be nourished and get some energy back. I'm looking forward to this one. And then for a dessert. Oh, oh yeah, I forgot about those. Yeah. <laughs> the ribs. Delicious. We've been patiently waiting. <laughs> <laughs> Fill our bellies. Oh, it smells so good, man. And it's just pure maple sap. <laughs> Winterberry. It this sap, smells. It has a great smell. Yeah. Give it that little bit of a sweet smell to it. And then when you're ready for a classic. It's been a great day, man. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh my fuck. <laughs> I'm speechless, man. This is so good. 
just cooked in its own juices with that, you can taste that little bit of like sweet yeah. flavor to mm -hmm. it. Maple. And there's maple smoke. Sweaty. Just pure, no, no salt, no nothing. No. Just pure wild. Mint. Don't you love that wave yeah. of warmth that I know. starts at your esophagus and just works right down all the way to your toes? Oh. I'm savoring every bite of this. Moose meat gives you so much energy. Mm. And it's like that sweet flavor to it too. Yeah. Like, it's, it's nice. good. Every person I share moose meat with, they are very skeptical at first, naturally. But they love it. And I always say, eating a moose steak is like drinking a coffee. Like it gets you going. Oh, absolutely. I, I'm actually looking mm. forward just to drinking like the moose juices yeah. at the bottom. Gotta Which have that sad. moose juice. As well, mm. recently I read that a human mm. can, sus can sustain themselves for the rest of their life solely off of moose meat. What? Yeah, because they... That's a life for cause me. Because it's a... Uh, they, they eat uh, wild foods and... What's the word I'm looking for? Sorry, I'm so hungry. They eat plant life all day long. Yeah. Their meat is so saturated with vitamins and nutrients that I uh, you got it, enough juice here oh yeah this is this incredible. is so good as always yep <laughs> I know eh oh my god and we got that rack of ribs just sizzling away and they smell like phenomenal they got mm -hmm. like a burnt crust on them mm -hmm. it's, yeah it's this is heavenly we needed this yeah. Well, this is our first meal since breakfast, mm -hmm. yep. which was bacon and eggs. Yeah. And it's oh. farm fresh eggs, farm fresh bacon. Mm hmm. I was going to say, man, mm. that bacon was insane. Mm. 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 Look at these ribs. This is gonna be good. <laughs> oh man. Oh. Hey, we're laughing. This has been quite the barbecue. It has. <laughs> oh, buddy. <laughs> it's gonna be insane. Careful, it's hot. We're at Swiss LA. Literally smells so good. This one here has got a nice big chunk of meat. Yeah, we'll split that. So up. we'll split that. Okay. Yeah, right on top, eh? Yeah. Save that maybe for some brook trout tomorrow. Cheers, man. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Butter. Oh. Butter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Mmm. No, honestly, like I almost, I almost taste like there's seasoning on here yeah. because it's like maple smoke. Oh, it's so That's good. A, really good. It does taste like seasoning. Mmm. Mmm. That's literally like butter, man. Oh my goodness. It's the fat. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. Feels like heaven, heaven, heaven. Mm. Ah, this is so good. Yeah, there's like some nice grease on that. Oh my goodness. Cheers, bro. Cheers. Mm, my God. Oh. Nothing beats wild game. I really like white pine. Yeah. So do you want to have some white pine needles? Yeah. We are going to, uh, now that we've done eating, 
It was amazing. We're gonna make some uh, chaga tea, and in that tea, obviously chaga, and then we're gonna use white pine needles, and as well as birch bark, and that will be our our uh, after dinner tea. Digestive. Yeah, our digestive, <laughs> and uh, as well as all our other water is boiling. So once we're done that, we'll finish our tea and uh, relax for the rest of the evening and uh, probably tuck in after that. So far, this has been a great first day here. Uh, I was calling for rain all day and the gods shined on us because we didn't have anything going on that way. Uh, honestly, I uh, can't I have no complaints. I'm not even in my uh, winter jacket right now. I'm no. just very nice and warm. I have a new sleeping bag that I'm excited to test out. It's a Snuggie. Snuggie. Snug pack? <laughs> a snug pack. It's not, I'm, not, I'm not winter camping in a Snuggie. <laughs> Snuggie. Chilling in my Snuggie. Uh, I've just totally lost it from there. Take over, Jay. <laughs> I think that's good that's enough. That's it? All right. <laughs>
I slept great in my uh, snug pack. So that was a good purchase. Uh, obviously it's the first night using it, so I can't fully recommend it yet, but enjoying it. It's snowing like crazy, but look at this view we got. It's freaking gorgeous. We have this whole lake to ourselves. Good out here in the northern forest. <sighs> I feel good. I feel rested. I'm hungry. I was uh, getting dehydrated through the night. I kept getting muscle cramps, but I uh, luckily filled up the canteen before bed. So just had to wake up a few times to drink and. Uh, Stepping out of the sleeping bag to use the washroom was uh, cold, but uh, felt good getting right back in there. Jason's up now. Uh, he got a, a little bit wet through the night, unfortunately. Uh, these are the biggest snowflakes I've ever seen. It rained all night long, pretty hard too. And then now we're dealing with uh, monster-sized snowflakes like this big. Our plan for today is we are going to try our hand at some uh, brook trout fishing. We are going to be collecting some uh, cambium and uh, experimenting with some different cambium recipes, tree cambium, which is the inner layer of uh, the bark. We're going to get some breakfast going. I think what's on the menu, deer, deer heart, yes. deer heart and deer meat. That's become kind of a tradition of ours too, yeah. deer heart. <laughs> Fresh deer heart over the fire, so, so good. we're going to uh, have some brunch and uh, put up a couple more taps for uh, some more maple syrup and uh, get the day started, yeah. I was uh, having some crazy vivid dreams last night <laughs> and for multiple reasons I believe. A, every time I eat wild meat, wild foods, I always have crazy dreams and also, every time I sleep out in the woods, I have crazy dreams. Yeah. Meat and dreams. Meat dreams, yeah. Yeah. So I was dreaming that uh, I thought I was awake, and I thought I seen a white mouse crawl right past my sleeping bag. <laughs> and I like looked over, and that woke me up, I thought. I was still sleeping. And then there was like five or six coyotes just like chilling in our camp. And as I stood up, they like got really small, like this size here. And I was just like, we're filming them, hanging out with them. And I like let one bite my hand. Like I was <laughs> shoving my hand in its mouth just, just for the photo for the gram. And uh, I kind of think that ties into uh, when I, uh, when my leg went through the ice how I instantly whipped out the camera before I <laughs> decided to help myself. <laughs> so that was uh, probably like, you know, relevant to that dream. But uh, it was nuts. <laughs> well, we got to uh, get some more meat into us so you can have some more of those meat dreams. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, and that was just a, a little touch of my whole experience of dreams all night. <sighs> I visited a lot of old friends too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's get this fire going. Let's get some meat in our bellies. Yeah. The heart is completely frozen still. So we're just gonna have to eat that later. We'll let it thaw out. I mean, I've heard of people having ice cold hearts. This deer was one of them. These sit overnight. And as you can see, well, it just dripped, but yeah, you know, it's still dripping decently. Let's see what, let's see what we got. Oh, oh baby. Look at that. 
<laughs> That's perfect. That's what we need. And then I'll check my uh, canteen here. Yeah, there's a decent amount in there. Yeah. It's Not as much, bit, but... It's, uh, it's a little gummed up here. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. We'll fix that. Yeah. Nice. Perfecto. Okay, so again, this, th this heart is thawing. We got uh, the sap on the pot hook. Look how fancy our pot hooks are. <laughs> we don't want to waste our energy uh, making uh, base camp style pot hooks. We just need something to work for while we're here. And right now we got uh, venison chunks on the pan. So that's going to be our breakfast. The heart will be our lunch. And this is, I imagine, going to be on the fire all day. It's already smelling great. Again. Yeah. Cheers, bro. Cheers. That smells amazing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, that's so good. We so tender. It. Yeah, I know. Mm. Flavorful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so simple. So delicious. Water and meat. Mm. <laughs> Words don't describe. Just gotta get out here and do it. So after breakfast, uh, we're gonna go head out, get some hazelnut catkins, get some good plant protein. We're just going to be harvesting cambium all day. And maybe some omega-3 from the lake. Yeah, and maybe some omega-3 trout. As wild as they come. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that too. Let's get yeah. a couple. We'll see. Some nice fats. I better shake this out of my hand, man. I'm just going to scarf it all on you. <laughs> you know, this thing is filling up pretty much every three minutes. Thank you, AquaQuest. Free water. Zero energy water. You know, even though uh, we're like doing these trips, being that it's modern day, things are a lot easier. This tarp has been rained on all night and it's bone dry inside. It's flawless. Like, imagine we're using canvas canvas tarps, that would be a nightmare. It needs another shot of uh, water before we do that. Oh, that's fresh. Yeah. Okay, so... <laughs> what we're doing here is um, we're actually picking ourselves one of the few deep winter wild edible plants that you can uh, find quite readily available. And that's the uh, catkins um, of the hazelnut plant. You can also do the catkins of the birch tree as well. These are a little less bitter. They do come out a little bit sawdusty in flavor, but they are actually a source of protein. And um, by First Nations uh, people of North America, they did consider this, according to records, a famine food or a flower extender. Um, but they definitely are a source of protein. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna spend the next while here along the trail collecting some of these uh, hazelnut catkins and we're gonna bring them back to camp and while we're boiling down our sap into a more syrupy consistency, we're just gonna allow these to boil up in that sap and uh, absorb almost like a tofu, that sweet uh, maple flavor. So. Nick and I are gonna spend the next little while here gathering some more firewood um, and some hazelnut catkins. Get some plant protein in this. This is the beaked hazelnut. It's a wild hazelnut. Um, usually comes out in, uh, in a green shell with the hazelnut uh, early summer time frame. But what you find here are these catkins. And in the catkin, it's almost like a raspberry. It's multiple, multiple flowers all in one. So they're actually 
a group of flowers that form into this hot dog shape. And um, you can actually, they're not very palatable, but you can eat them in a survival situation right off the tree. And again, they have this little sawdusty flavor, but they're not too bitter, almost a flowery taste. And that's what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be breaking up these catkins into small little pieces and then putting them into the boil, absorbing that sap flavor. Um. All right, we want to show you guys the amount of energy it takes to get some fuel at this time of extremely wet year so that we can cook up our moose, which will then in turn give us more fuel. It's that delicate balance. And uh, we have used our snowshoes to gather wood around camp, but uh, we left them back at the camp, so. Lesson learned. We got some nice standing dead maple here. This stuff's gonna burn real good, burn long. Nice cooking coals, nice flavor to the meats. Oh yeah, buddy. There we go. Awesome. Well, we're just getting the last little bit of our wood here. And we've got this nice punky uh, pine tree. And our ancestors would have taken this soft, soft, punky, dry um, dust. And they would have used that as uh, baby powder. There's actually uh, sources that say that they would have used this for baby powder, foot powder, um, and different things that would uh, require um, what for skin these. ailments, essentially. So I thought that was uh, that's pretty neat. There's uh, stop by your local pharmacy and pick up your uh, baby powder right here in the pine tree aisle. <laughs> we just got back to camp. We're going to warm up. We're wet and cold. Before we left, I put a punky log over the coals. And it was thin, I really didn't think it would do much, but it turns out it did. It kept our coals for us, so uh, we were able just to blow this back into flames. Now we have the deer heart cooking, the sap back on the boil. It's lunchtime, we're hungry. We'll check back in when we're uh, scarfing some meat. some tree bark bacon and we're also going to try to draw some of the starches out of this uh, tree bark and see what we can do with it so right here we have a white pine tree we're going to take this tree okay um, and essentially what we're going to do the uh, cambium is this inner layer that during the spring as you can see the bark is soft you can almost peel it it's kind of like reptile skin and underneath that is a thin layer of cambium and that's where the tree gets fed through the roots up through the tree and feeds the tree with the nutrients that it needs and we're going to draw from that so what you're going to want to do is take your knife cut through that bark once you get underneath it always peel down there's an old uh, First Nations uh, tale that 
if you're peeling pine from the white uh, white pine tree, which is the official tree of the uh, Algonquin people, you should always strip the tree down and not up so that you don't throw it throw it up. So we're gonna go ahead here and we're gonna collect this camium. And what we're looking for is this nice spongy inner layer right here. And we're gonna collect as much of this as we can. Gearheart, maple sap going to be maple syrup. Uh, this is the white pine cambium. We're just warming it up so that way we can mash it all in in the warm water. And uh, right here as well, uh, the bigger, two bigger pieces of the cambium, we're gonna have uh, pine cambium bacon, which I've never had, so I'm interested to try. And then as well, we got all our catkins uh, ready to go. We're gonna mash those up and uh, we'll see what comes next. So essentially we're mashing and squeezing all the starches out of the cambium, hoping to get like a milky consistency in the water and let that settle, drain off the water and the sludge in the bottom will be what we're after. Got a tree bark bacon. <laughs> this is not going to be appetizing, but it can be used as a flower extender. You can mash all this down, or you can eat it. It normally tastes quite resiny and it's hard to digest, but it is food. Um, so, cheers. Cheers, brother. I don't know if that's a good cheers or not, but. <laughs> Interesting texture. Mm. Not so I, bad. No. I usually, I usually just say it tastes like tree bark. Mm hmm. It really does. Clears out your nose, that's for sure. Almost like a minty, mm -hmm. minty dessert. Mm hmm. God, I'm gonna smoke out. <coughs> you know, winter camping is hard enough as it is but when it's raining snowing raining snowing raining snowing it's just that much harder and everything is soaking wet <sighs> oh, including belief. yourself yeah. but your wood mm -hmm. So we just added some of the uh, pine cambium goop into our hazelnut catkin and sap mixture. We're going to let that boil down. While we're waiting for that, we're going to get our main course going here, which is some uh, moose steaks. And uh, I don't know, if that doesn't look delicious, then there's got to be something wrong with you. We got our moose steak. That's mine? Yeah. Medium rare. Look at that. Put a little bit of juice. Oh. Juice to moose. Juice to moose. Cheers, moose. brother. <laughs> oh my god. You know, mm. after all the work, that it takes to survive out here. <clears throat> He's getting really, really hungry and really, really low on energy. 
and this, this is like better than a steak from the keg. Mm -hmm. Seriously. This is life. No additives, no salt, no nothing. Pure meat, and that flavor just comes from when you sear that steak and it locks mm -hmm. in all the juices, and you get that little bit of crisp on the outside. Not to mention, no steroids, nor no Nothing. hormones. Nothing. No chemicals I've never heard of. This is as pure as it gets. Mm. Mm -mm. And we have our dessert to look forward to as well. Mm -hmm. Which is just gonna be phenomenal. It'll be nice and warming. Mm. That is so, so good. Mm -hmm. Dare I say, phenomenal? Phenomenal. <laughs> it is. It is. Mm, my God. <clears throat> Praise the almighty moose. I hate to bring up the topic, but to me, this is real bushcraft. At its... Uh, you know, true form. I understand there's so many different ways to describe bushcraft, but to me, this is it here. Using the land to keep you alive. Mm -hmm. uh, using the most efficient ways of doing everything you can. Not, don't waste a single calorie. <clears throat> and it's not always about having the best gear. Yeah. It's not always about having the most expensive gear. It's also not about getting that expensive piece of gear and opening it up on your kitchen floor and taking a photo <laughs> with it and claiming that you actually do bushcraft. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm more about the adventure. Mm -hmm. We're just going to enjoy uh, our afternoon here now. And uh, when we uh, check back in, we'll be uh, settling in a bit more, enjoying our uh, maple and... Oh, excuse me, maple, deer heart, cattail, or no, not cattail, uh, catkin, catkin, hazelnut catkin, also white pine cambian, it's got, it. it's got everything in it, I guess we'll cut to that scene right now. Oh man, that looks good. Oh, it smells good. That delicious. It's like a baseball steak from the keg. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So good. We're going to have to uh, eat a slice each before we put that in the stew. Mm -hmm. Not to be demanding, but I demand it. <laughs> Thank you. Cheers, Cheers. brother. <laughs> mm. Oh, mm. oh my goodness, that's soft. Mm -hmm. Wow. So good. Wow. Like, that's amazing. I still got moose in my mouth. I just. <laughs> wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's just as great as I remember from the last one. Mm. Also, this morning I said about, I remember someone telling me big snowflakes means little snow. That guy was full of shit. <laughs> well, because the wood is so wet uh, and we kept getting smoked out there, our uh, firewall, our snow firewall is depleted to nothing. But so we decided uh, to double duty our logs, dry them out and create the chimney effect. And now we're not getting smoked out at all. Sometimes you just have to think on your feet and rearrange your life. And the sun is out. Look at that. Oh, that's nice. That's a good sign. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna take our uh, almost finished deer heart. 
We're gonna slice that up, put it in with our maple sap, which is actually boiling down real nice uh, to a nice brown color. But before it boils down anymore, we're gonna put all of our uh, hazelnut catkins in there and boil them essentially like a boiled vegetable, soften them up a little bit. We're gonna add the heart bits and then when the cambium is finished settling, you see how it has that kind of milky consistency. The water itself is actually milky. Whenever that settles, we're gonna add that to the soup, thicken it up, and uh, we'll have ourselves a nice extreme winter survival in the Northern Canadian wilderness dinner. All right, we have our maple candied catkins and we've boiled all of our sap down to hopefully a nice sweet base. And we're gonna sit and enjoy these catkins soaked in maple syrup. Oh, it's so good. They're like a nice soft, almost like a hot cereal. They're actually quite delicious. Yeah, I was uh, quite impressed with how it tastes. Mm. It just looks so good. Mmm. Very good. We're uh, pretty close to camp here. And we come along here. Some fresh moose poop. Right for the... Right for the eating. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's pretty cool. Gloss sets. Gloss sets. That's pretty cool though. Moose, eating moose meat. And track him all the way back where he came from in the bush. That's pretty cool. for some omega-3 but we didn't get any so uh, there's some natural brook trout in this lake but we have spent uh, spent a little bit more time uh, doing other activities but uh, we're just gonna fish here for probably a couple more minutes see if we can nab something before the Sun goes down but uh, weather that we've had over the last couple days uh, we were already skeptical whether or not we'd be able to actually come out here or not um, because of all the slush and the heavy snow and that's a nightmare if you're sledding in a heavy sled like this um, so what we've done because of all the snow tonight and the slushiness of it uh, we actually almost got stuck a couple times on our way back uh, from getting the catkins um, so we've already taken a tree um, that we were utilizing from before and took some of the uh, branches and boughs and propped up the back end up over here so that tonight our sled doesn't freeze to the lake. Uh, that would uh, spell disaster. The closest person from this location is approximately 20 kilometers away. And uh, that would be quite the trek without the sled. So we're taking some precautions tonight and um, hopefully we'll be able to get out of here safely tomorrow. We're here on the final evening of our trip. It's been a good one. Uh, we were planning on staying a lot later tomorrow, but uh, given the amount of slush on the lake, we don't want to turn this into a second survival situation. So we're going to cut out early in the morning while everything's still crispy and frozen. On this trip, as always, I just want to give thanks to Mother Nature for providing us with everything we've needed on this trip. Big thanks to all the animals that put down their lives so that we can nourish ourselves. All the trees we've used, all the resources this land can provide for us that we took advantage of. I'm just forever grateful for that. As well, I just want to thank you all for watching too. This is so much fun for us. It's always the conflict of like we just want to enjoy the trip and filming adds a whole new aspect to it. So. You know, I'm, I've grown to like filming our trips because they are very unique.
after being cold for two days and tomorrow a uh, long trek home uh, I'm excited you know go home and see my wife again and carry on and let's start planning the next trip I don't know if you guys uh, have had the chance but we uh, what was it last late September we did a survival trip completely wild edibles truly completely living off the land and it was such a great experience and it's funny you spend all that time uh, putting in so much energy for food and everything is just uh, almost mathematical how many calories am I going to put out to get back it's so much effort just to harvest all your food on the spot one thing I was not expecting about that trip is when I went home just such a weird feeling of you know opening up a fridge to fresh food it almost felt wrong like I was like doing something wrong by doing that turning on a tap hot cold water right on the right on the go getting back into your car after the trip yes driving after <laughs> these trips is the weirdest feeling instant heat <laughs> yeah instant heat and just being on a road it yeah. just seems so weird now that that happened I'm probably gonna expect a little bit of that again but you know it's worth it it's uh, such a great feeling being out here so I'm I'm just happy I'm a happy guy but again we just want to thank you guys for everything it gives us drive to keep doing these things and filming them because we could do these trips all the time and not film a thing and we have done that in the past too it just it makes me happy to share it with people especially good people who enjoy it uh, I hope you guys could take something away from this and we're just uh, happy to bring you guys along we're just happy guys <laughs> Two happy Canadians. Yeah, two happy Canadians. Out in the pouring rain at minus five. Being Canadian. Yeah. Just some final thoughts here. It's really simple to um, sit at home, and I'm, I'm also talking about myself as well, and, and watch videos or watch winter survival from the comfort of a home. But, um, you know, I'm a couple times over advanced winter warfare qualified from my infantry days. It always brings me back and humbles me when I come out here into the wilderness at this time of year. Um, I mean, it was pouring rain for pretty much two days straight, three degrees Celsius and dipping down to minus temperatures at night. And the reality of it is, is the amount of energy that you're expending to um, really stay somewhat comfortable in, in an extreme environment like this is, uh, is it's pretty intense. You really do feel the lack of resources in your body um, and that lack of energy. And it makes you think differently and act differently and everything takes longer. It's definitely not as simple as it looks. It gets easier with time and experience and knowledge. We set out to accomplish what we said at the beginning, which was to cleanse ourselves, to cleanse our bodies, to cleanse our minds, to cleanse our souls. Um, by coming out here and being a part of nature and not working against it. You know, being in tune with everything from the firewood that you cut uh, to the food that you eat that came from the wild <clears throat> to building your bed with the spruce boughs. All those things accumulate into such a spiritual experience when, when we come out here, when That's Nick true. and I do our trips. So we definitely set out to do what we accomplished to do, and this has been yeah. an amazing trip. Yeah, I'm proud of you, um, man. Yeah, same, same, brother. We did and, well. And uh, we're gonna definitely get a good night's rest tonight, that's for sure. Oh, yeah. And I think Nick and I are just gonna sit back once the camera goes off, and uh, just relax around this fire and reminisce on some of the foods that we've eaten, uh, which have been quite unique, of course. And um, yeah, uh, you know, I, I just really hope that you guys enjoyed watching this really as much as we enjoyed doing this trip together um, and really being a part of this experience here with us as well so yeah that's important um, to us thank you so much for watching and uh, I bid adieu <laughs> I think everybody maybe not to this extreme but everybody should try a wild camping experience and by wild camping I mean coming out here, minimal gear, 
uh, learning about your wild edibles and the feeling of being nourished from the land you're around is just unreal. Alright, just signing off in the shelter for the night. It has been an absolutely amazing trip and uh, finally the snow and the rain has stopped and uh, we just have a little bit of silence which is uh, awesome. So signing off, we shall see you all tomorrow morning and over to Blackwater Bush <laughs> So, oh. Oh, chilling in my snuggie now, feeling pretty comfortable. Uh, there's a massive mound of icy water that's built up on the tarp that I don't want to disturb. So hopefully I don't uh, start kicking and screaming in my sleep or something crazy. Uh, again, thank you all. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow morning. Wish us good luck for tonight. Hope we don't freeze to death. Uh, morning, day three. Uh, it got really cold last night. What do you think with attempts? I would probably put between minus 12 to minus 15 or so. It was definitely colder last night. Yeah. Very cold. A few uncomfortable moments. Everything was just a little bit more moist. All our gear. So I just made for a, a really cold night. But uh, we got the fire going again. And uh, we're just going to warm up while we pack up our gear. Yeah, and uh, everything's nice and crisp, so we're gonna head out while everything's crisp. And uh, yeah, yeah. St stick to the plan. Stick to the plan. Or else we could end up being out here for a few more days, so. Yeah, closest, closest person from here, like I said yesterday, is about 20 kilometers, so we've got quite the, uh, <laughs> quite the <laughs> extra adventure ahead of this adventure if yeah. we uh, don't follow through with uh, smart thinking. So. Yeah. Yeah, so we we're going to quickly pack up and then uh, uh, get back on the sled and start going back to civilization. Awesome trip, man. Great trip, brother. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> we survived! Woo! <laughs>